I made the account and put the first five videos up mm -hmm. and it like blew up within the first week. I didn't know what exactly it was. I just knew that I had to keep growing it and growing it. Hey everyone, welcome to the Craters channel. My name is Chris Kelly with ProductionCrate.com and today I am joined by Wes Richardson. Wes is an animator, Wes is a visual effects artist, Wes does motion design for big clients such as Nickelodeon, Ford, PBS. Dude, you have done some work on some major stuff, but also Wes has an incredible Instagram channel where he also does a ton of very, very awesome visual effects pieces. Wes, welcome to the Craters channel. Thank you, thank you a lot for uh for having me on it's um it's an honor to to talk with you guys for sure Can you give us a little background of what you're doing day to day yeah my day to day is uh i'm just working with different graphic studios um half of the work i do is design work uh like back-end storyboarding and conceptualizing for network branding for tv commercials you are a successful freelancer who's doing like decent sized commercial and broadcast stuff i know a lot of our viewers would would be interested in moving in that direction. Do you have any oh, recommendations for freelancers who are just like trying to build their portfolio and find that kind of work? First and foremost, if you can find uh, an outlet or some education in design, uh, that's always a good a good start. Do you have a preference between doing like look dev type stuff and storyboarding to doing the final production? I feel way more exhausted after doing a big long design job. The creative juices are just flowing a, a little more uh, because of the the speed at which things need to be produced. I think that's why Snatch and Snacks started the way it did is because I had like such control over everything. I, I got to decide, you know, how much design time I could put into something and then right. how much time I could put into like the visual effects part. I think because Snatch and Snacks has become such an extension of my like creative opinions that I'm starting to like that side of it more. I'm so amazed at the creativity that you put into these videos. There's also this like weird niche that you're doing of like the like the, the lifting, lifting dudes. Yeah. And like, yeah, what, yeah. yeah. So what why did you choose the the lifting dudes as kind of like your thing? When, the first thing I did when I moved back to North Carolina was uh, I got into CrossFit and then uh, through that, I got really into Olympic lifting. I started doing these videos because I was like, you know what? I want to do something funny that is relevant to the weightlifting community. And I want to try to get more followers on my my like personal Instagram account. So I did like the first three or four videos and they started getting shared by all these accounts. And then my brother, he, he was like, you should make that its own page, like its own account. Start it and name it Snatch and Snacks. I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna give you the whole thing. It's like, do the Instagram, name it this, like. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got like, you set up. You should, you, should call it, you should call it Snatch and Snacks. And I was like, okay. I made the account and put the first five videos up mm -hmm. and it like blew up within the first week. I didn't know what exactly it was. I just knew that I had to keep growing it and growing it. Eventually, uh, you know, I branched out from weightlifting into other sports and, you know, just random other videos. You're branching out, but it's still, it looks like Snatch and Stacks. Like right, you have right. a look that is pretty much yours. The Snatch and Snacks um, Instagram, and I, I mean, you're like, you're almost at 80,000 followers there. Like, is that purely a creative outlet for you or is it also um, revenue generating in any way? You know, it started off kind of small, like people asking for, you know, videos, you know, commissions and whatnot. Uh, then I guess bigger like influencers uh, would contact me to do videos that might have a, like a bit of a bigger budget. Can you give an example of one of those projects? I've done a couple for Larry Wheels. He's like a big uh, like bodybuilding powerlifter okay. influencer. Uh -huh. I'm starting to gain a little bit more traction with people that are starting to notice like the importance of that, having that type of production quality in their advertising. I think people are starting to understand the relevance of that. Um, I think it's it's an important time to 
to keep the ball rolling. What would it take you to commit full time to Snatch and Snacks? The most attainable thing in the near future would be some sort of like Patreon, um, but I'm just gonna, you know, keep at it and see, yeah. see where it goes. You've got the the Predator edit breakdown here on your Snatch and Stacks profile. And you know, it looks like it did pretty well. I saw you do the breakdown for this video, but you don't seem to do it that often. Is there a reason that you're not really like getting too much into that? It's, uh, it's a time thing, but it's definitely very rewarding uh, seeing it because it does help people understand the work that goes into it. That spacewalk astronaut video that I did for a production crate. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first, as I was doing it, you know, I was thinking, man, I wish this was like a little bit more After Effects user friendly so that I could somehow like package everything up to show how I comped it. Yeah, yeah. but if you make tutorials, let us know and we'll share them around. That would be, that would be amazing. Pick one of those videos and like, give us kind of like a rough idea of how long that video took you. Real World Tactical, the one that you guys reposted with the shield and the, the Freaking Lynch wild play. man, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that one was about 15 working hours. The engagement is a little bit better if the videos are under 10 seconds. Anything longer than that is kind of like, people aren't gonna sit through it. The, the ones that I'm the most passionate about never get the engagement that I want them to. Honestly, the Ryan Garcia one that I did uh, a couple weeks ago was probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And- uh, That's all right? Not really, I guess the cool thing is today, Ryan Garcia like posted it in his story. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, you know, that's, that's a win for sure. What's the hardest visual effect shot you've ever had to do? Probably the Game of Thrones one because the original video that I shot of him in our gym was, mm -hmm. it was meant to be more of like a set replacement thing. Like I was going to roto, just like ro rotoscope like different parts of him. But then the more and more I got into it, I was like, no, the entire <laughs> thing needs to be rotoed. So that was like the first part of it. The second part of it, motion capture for the like white walkers. I took video of me in my basement running towards the camera and like keyframed the animation of like an IK rig uh -huh. and applied that in cinema to like a zombie thing nice. that I had modeled. Not the right way to go about it, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, everything came together in the end. Wes, are you ready for some speed questions? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, let's, let's go. What is the best audio moment or sound effect in any movie? Spoiler alert, but in, um, it was one of the recent Star Wars movies. I knew, I knew, I knew you're going there, man. <laughs> it's where they blast light speed through the Star Destroyers. Uh -huh. I just remember being in the theaters and like the entire, uh, the entire audience, just everyone, just like unanimous. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Are you watching any TV shows right now? I'm in the middle of watching Dark, the German show about time uh -huh. travel. So if you could only have one pair of shoes for the rest of your life. Would you wear rollerblades or moon shoes? Moon shoes. What if the gravity all, all of a sudden goes kaput? Oh, then you're <laughs> ahead of the game at that point. <laughs> Everybody else is wishing they had moon shoes. All right, if you had to fight one of these two presidents, Abraham Lincoln or Theodore Roosevelt, who would you fight? Probably Lincoln. <laughs> It'll be a te test of strength. I think that's why. Can you try to hum while holding your nose closed? <laughs> Do you know what the loudest sound in recorded history is? Like a flyby of a jet, maybe? Apparently, it's the Krakatoa volcano eruption. And it oh. says, I read like 180 decibels. It was heard 3,000 miles away. That is insane. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell our viewers and our listeners where they can find your work? My Snatch and Snacks work is obviously on Instagram through Snatch and Snacks. And my website is westrichardson.me. And that's where I have most of my uh, portfolio work for clients and whatnot. That's yep. that's where you can find everything. Definitely go check it out. Wes does awesome work. Thank you guys for, for having me on. For sure. All right, Wes. Thanks, dude. I'll see you All around. Right. All right, <laughs> take care. Bye. Bye.